They said this day would never come. They said our sights were set too high. Yet there he was, a man with brown skin, kinky hair, a defining moment in history. To use a word that's usually inappropriate for politics, it was transcendental. It was something qualitatively different about his crowds and his supporters. And I think that informed the way I, I wrote throughout the year. I grew up in the segregated South. I grew up in Orangeburg, South Carolina, the tail end of Jim Crow. There was an incident in 1968. To think that um, in my lifetime we could elect the first black president was just an amazing thing. I just sat down to write about the experience. So to have won the, the Pulitzer Prize for that um, was just, you know, I'm a lucky guy. Pulitzer Prizes were announced today. They honor distinguished works of literature, music, drama, and print journalism. Bob Woodward hired me when he was Metro editor. To this day, he is the most resourceful reporter I've ever met. Eileen Wilson was working at a small paper. She stumbled on a big story and grabbed onto it and didn't let go. She was able to, to tell their stories, which also told our story, you know, as a country and who we were and what decisions we were making. The Pulitzers look at the cream of the crop and, and those pieces that I think resonate beyond their particular topic area. This was a recognition that fashion really does live beyond the runway and fashion magazines. Clothes tell us something really specific about culture. It's like the, the billboard for a period of time. I feel that I am writing for people who don't have a voice. There was one fellow at Morgan Stanley who had my picture and a red circle and a slash through my face in his office. The Army literally was calling my boss, telling him to kill the story, and when that didn't work, they called my boss's boss. And as soon as we did our reporting, the cat was out of the bag and the army immediately stopped stripping them of VA benefits. <laughs> Journalists who do this type of work, you could either say it's a, a calling or maybe a personality defect. They do it because they have to do it. Whether it's the people that dug through the data or walked through the war zones, it's this act of bearing witness. I swung my graphic around and held it. And I could only hope that it turned out the way that I looked at it through the finder. We've seen some incredibly brave war correspondents. arrived in 62, Wes Gallagher, who was the AP president, believed that the American publishers would be willing to hear the truth about Vietnam, and he said, go ahead and report everything you see. And Peter, don't make any mistakes. We became very aware through the AP and others that the Pentagon, the military high command, and the White House and State Department were not happy with our coverage. But frankly, we didn't give a damn. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. It never looked as terrible as it was. And it made her wonder if hell was a pretty place, too. I shot her! You never really understand a person until you consider things from his point of view. And to get to know these people, you have to go where they went. 
It's a desire to know how our democracy works, how it really works. In both Master of the Senate and The Power Broker, I examined power through one man. If you can figure out how he did it and explain it adequately to people, you'll be filling a gap in our knowledge about how political power really works. Robert Moses basically said, anyone who wants a contract from the city or state will never speak to you. So when I started, not only was there not a book, there wasn't a single magazine or newspaper article examining public authorities as a source of political power. To work for seven years, basically with no one terribly interested in what you're doing, uh, being broke a lot of the time, but then at the end of it to have a Pulitzer Prize, that's really something. Editorial cartoons are so vitally important to democracy. The first Pulitzer winning cartoon, you can understand it 100, 1,000 years from now in terms of social justice, human rights, and really just the powerful visual. We can get away with so much that if we are strong, the rest of journalism is. And the tough part about being a cartoonist is your beat is everything. First gleam and then Merrill, the high times were finished. Soon U.S. wealth was 14 trillion diminished. The Pulitzer music category started in 1943 with William Schumann. And just shortly after that, Aaron Copeland, Virgil Thompson, Charles Ives iconic American figures who really helped define what the American voice is. It was a Pulitzer first, jazz in the category usually reserved for classical music. Blood on the Fields traces the journey of an African couple sold into slavery in the United States. I am the 2015 Pulitzer Prize winner for a piece commemorating life in the anthracite coal mining region of Pennsylvania. In a certain sense, it is a kind of poetic history. Two roads diverged in the yellow wood. I love my crooked feet, shaped by vanity and work shoes made to outlast belief. It is like what we imagine knowledge to be, dark, Salt, clear, moving, utterly free. Gwendolyn Brooks, who was the first African-American poet to get the prize, is somebody whose work has shaped generations of writers. My questions as a poet are really simple, and I think they come down to the sense of uh, what do we do to one another and why. <laughs> And I think what a poem does is it brings us to a place where we can become aware of all that we wish we knew how to say. Good evening. Last week they handed out the Pulitzer Prizes. The gold medals went not to a great metropolitan newspaper, but to two weekly papers in North Carolina. Their editors decided to fight and expose the Ku Klux Klan. What very brave newspaper editors did in the South during the Civil Rights Movement at a time when the KKK was not just a three scary letters, but a reality, was amazingly brave. Throughout the history of the prizes, there have also been individual columnists who have suffered because of the stances they took, and yet they persisted. It is imperative that each of us examine our own heart and conscience and determine what part we have played in creating a society which permits a man to be murdered because of his desire to be free and equal under the law. I don't want people just to think, I want them to feel when they look at pictures, because that's the only way you're gonna get a real response. It was a routine rescue, and all of a sudden everything went to garbage. I still remember thinking to myself, I don't want to see them hit. Without words, the best photographs will convey immediately something of importance. I had no idea of the impact, and I still don't understand it even today. We all felt attacked. Everybody felt attacked. And that gave us the energy to cover this story. No matter how massive a story it is, how disastrous it may be, 
The human element is the thing that reaches out and touches people. We wanted in 1986 for the coverage of the Colombian volcano that caused a mudslide. I think 25,000 people or more were killed. One of the most tragic things to see was this little girl who was trapped in the rubble. They couldn't dislodge her. And, you know, those are the kind of things that break your heart. And I think that probably resonated with so many people, that one little girl. Six months later, I found the mother, and she felt like it gave her daughter's death meaning to have been kind of the symbol of this horrible tragedy, and which brought a lot of help, of course, to the town and to the people. And I think the most important thing about any award is shining the light back on the story. It makes me, you know, hang on to that naive belief that we can change the world. <laughs> down at the list of winners. These are all people who took risks, who really wanted to help people to understand what was really going on. The one word that I come back to is impact. The Pulitzer Prize is vital in keeping the editorial cartoon alive. It's the announcement each year that there's one book of poems that ought to be read because it's that important and it's that powerful. I think it's an amazing documentation of who we are as human beings. The Pulitzer Prize is just the one that matters the most. It is shorthand that means that this is lasting. You know, we live in a world where everything changes faster and faster, so nothing seems to endure. But one of the things that has endured for a century is the symbolic value of the Pulitzer Prize.